Hello everyone. It has been more than a hot minute. It is now February 10th and you're like, Alexa, you didn't post a January reading vlog. What, what What's going on? Okay, so I started to film a January reading vlog and I have footage from reading in January. Um, oh gosh, that's a long story about the books I read. Basically, I fell into a reading slump after reading two books that I had very strong opinions on and I, I still kind of plan on making a video on it, on those books that I read. They're non-fiction. But then I fell into the reading slump and for the rest of January I just didn't read and I decided to ultimately scrap all of that footage. I still might change my mind, but I probably won't because I decided instead of posting the reading vlog footage of the two books I read, I'll probably instead film a standalone video wrap up of those two books because I have that much to say about them. My mini spoiler is I read a biography of Betty Broderick, who is a double murderer, and then I read an unauthorized biography of her daughter. So I didn't get back into reading until a few days ago. So now it's February and I'm reading again and I'm about to show you my net galley queue. So you see, I have so many books to read. Amazing thrillers I got approved for. I am about to like head right into a huge reading binge. So we're back on the reading vlog bullshit. So what is the book I read to kick me out of my reading slump? I read Scrappy Little Nobody by Anna Kendrick. I just finished that the other day. It popped up on Kindle Unlimited and I'm like, yes, I love a good memoir. That one had been on my list. And I'm not sure if it's a four or a five star. It's better than some of the memoirs I gave four stars last year, but at the same time I'm not positive it's a five star, so it might land at a 4.5 and I just don't know if I'm going to round up or down, but I really enjoyed reading it. I liked her voice, I liked some of the stories, it kind of delivered those Hollywood stories I was expecting. There was only one tiny thing I didn't like about it, there's just this one chapter toward the end where she describes her like perfect party she would throw if she were less antisocial and I just thought it was kind of filler bullshit that was trying a little hard to be funny and cute but otherwise I liked it start to finish I would have read another hundred pages uh, and I hope that she writes another memoir later and really spills dirt she's a smart cookie she's only she's about my age she's in her 30s so you know still want to work with people so she wasn't totally spilling all the beans on Hollywood goss but I really enjoyed it and what am I gonna read next I don't know let me show you my net galley queue I have some amazing choices yes I'm filming my screen but who is a lucky biatch look at all these amazing books I feel spoiled for choice. I don't know which one I'm going to dive into first, but as you can see, I have a lot of books to read. So let's see what I can burn through. Um, yeah. Hello, we're trying something different since I bought a new mini tripod. When I can, I'm gonna do bits of this vlog at home with the proper camera. So it is now Friday the 14th, Valentine's Day. So I finally picked a book to read. I am reading All the Pretty Things by Emily Arsenault. It is a YA thriller. I really, I call it more of a mystery. It's a, it's got like a low key mystery suspense vibe so far. It is about a girl whose dad owns an amusement park and a kid who worked at the amusement park dies kind of mysteriously. She's actually out of town at the time and her best friend is the one who finds the body. And on the day that she returns from visiting her grandparents, her friend disappears, but then they find her at the top of the Ferris wheel. She won't come down and they send the main character, Ivy, up to go get her. This is all just kind of the setup of something happened with this kid, Ethan, because she asked Morgan, why, what, what's happening? Are you okay? Like, why are you doing this? And Morgan says, ask Ethan, and Ethan is the kid who died. Morgan has to go to the hospital to evaluate her mental state, and this kind of kicks off Ivy wanting to help her friend and find out what happened with this kid who died and why Morgan is acting this way. So it has kind of a very low-key mystery suspense vibe. It's not a thriller in the sense that like there are massive stakes against the main, main character. No one's trying to kill her or anything like that, but clearly something weird happened with this kid who worked at her dad's amusement park they all work at the amusement park and him dying I so far like kind of the specifics I like all of the small town because it's a town in New Hampshire and I like the amusement park thing 
I kind of think I know where it's going. It's a little bit of a slow burn, but I like the specificity of the setting so much that I'm, I'm vibing with it. Small town secrets. I really kind of have a thing for theme park settings because it's such a strange place. So I like that aspect of it. I'm at about 40%. So I'm kind of waiting to see what that big midpoint twist is to really tell where the book is going. And this one's gonna sound funny to you. Uh, this can be a combo reading writing vlog once again because I finally have something writing related to talk about. I got my edit letter for the Ivies from my editor on Thursday. So I am going into full on revision mode again. We're going to see how this impacts my reading. I kind of want to read through it. I also kind of have to. It is also author mentor match time. Submissions are open. It's overwhelming. I mean, it's, it's good, but it's overwhelming. We have had more submissions than ever before in a shorter period of time. So meaning we've already surpassed the most amount of submissions we've gotten and it's been 48 hours. So I'm pleasantly surprised, but it's a ton of work. And I'm also mentoring, so I'm going to have to choose someone. So I, I am definitely not giving up reading as I revise, which is going to be very, very interesting. I'm going to actually try to use continuing to read all of my thrillers as a way to keep my brain in thriller mode as I'm revising a thriller. Um, and I've decided I'm actually going to do an entire video about kind of my weird thought process for tackling this revision, because people are always asking for tips on how to revise and in fact that video will probably be up but before this reading vlog um because I don't want to drone on in this reading vlog about kind of my thought process but I got the letter on Thursday I read it my editor also did annotated notes she did a basically a line edit at the same time going through the entire manuscript she's super thorough which I love and I've just been digesting and coming up with a plan but I gotta get to work because I got a month to do this revision so part of this reading vlog. It's going to be a reading writing vlog because I'm going to have to work on that revision at the same time. Guess who was a really terrible person and vlogger and totally skipped vlogging the end of the last book in the entirety of another book and a really good book at that. Me. So I finished All the Pretty Things, landed on a solid four stars. It really picks up after the middle, particularly it's like the second half is really really good. And then I breezed through The Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. It's one of my favorite reads that I've read in a really long time. Probably my favorite YA thriller that I've read in over a year. So you missed a good one. So sorry about that. You'll have to catch it in the wrap up. And I mean, if you're watching this reading vlog and you were thinking about that book, definitely read it. And then I started The Night Swim by Megan Golden this morning on the way to work. She also wrote The Escape Room one of my favorite books of 2019, so I'm very excited. I'm only a few chapters in on that one. It's a tr got a true crime podcast angle, which I like, and my revision. I am chugging along. I am now a little past 100 pages. I have definitely hit a snag point uh, in the last few days. It's very normal, by the way, where I've started second guessing every single choice and whether or not I'm making the book better. So I have brought in some CPs where I've sent them a partial. I've only sent them the section of the book that I've revised so far to get their feedback to kind of help me keep on track and make sure what I'm doing is working. Um, but the p kind of discovery writing method of revisions working so far, literally last night in bed after I finished Good Girl's Guide, it's like one in the morning, I figured out one of my question marks. I had had a note from my editor, X needs to happen, and I didn't know how to make it work. And I was like, duh, the most obvious solution came to me, literally something that I had already built into the manuscript, and I can just springboard off of that. And so that's kind of the organic process that I enjoy with revision, where I don't figure out everything I'm going to do before I start. I figure out what I'm going to do where I need to start, then I start. Um, and if you did watch my revision process video, kind of the best update from that is I'm doing what I said I would do, except I'm having to go back more than I anticipated. This is the first revision where I've really combed through something and then combed back over it. And I'm doing that a lot in Act 1 because setup is so critical in a thriller. Um, so I already, I did work. But I've already earmarked several spots I'm going to go back to to do even more work on because I really want them to land. So I think I'm going to end up combing over Act 1 specifically three or four times at least. So that is kind of how it is going. 
Oh, and it's Wednesday, February 26th. Forgot that part. This is the portrait of an author who has broken herself. Um, I didn't film mid-breakdown because that's not pretty. Um, yesterday was the day my revision tried to hurt me. <laughs> I basically, I did some stuff and I was really worried about it. And I sent it to your critique partners and one of them told me something didn't work and I almost had a mental breakdown. I was already really, really stressed before she told me because I, I, you, you have the feeling. You have the feeling when you've broken your book and you don't want to hear that it's true. And like, it's not nuclear. Like she didn't tell me your whole book is garbage. She said one little thing felt a tiny bit inorganic and I might want to rethink how I build up to that thing. Last night, I played video games for six hours and watched The Office because I needed a break. So this is your portrait of an author who's in a revision that's really hard. Um, sometimes that's exactly what you have to do. You take a day off. I woke up this morning and I think I have a solution. I also have a second CP reading to get her opinion as well. But in addition to that second solution, well, that second solution actually I think is going to improve my second act. It's actually almost a good thing that I have to do this because it adds the need for my character to speak to someone that I think is going to be a very good scene. And I also uh, incorporated some new hints slash clues into a previous part of the book. And I had a thought this morning about one of those clues and something maybe I can do with it that could be exciting. So I feel slightly back on track. I'm still very intimidated by this one particular scene. It's like, this scene is always been a tricky scene and I still haven't nailed it, but I'm basically only at a page 110. I've been going over the same 30, 40 pages for almost a week, which is really scary, but I have to remind myself that like this part, the buildup and then the investigation pieces in the second act are literally the most important. So if they're taking me a lot of time, that's fine. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm reading. Um, not last night, like, I played video games till one in the morning, like, no regrets. Uh, I'm playing a new one, by the way, called Universum. I'm still getting a feel for it. It just released in beta on Steam. Apparently it's been in alpha for a while, but now beta's out. And I heard about it, um, from Plumbella, a simmer. And it's basically a combination of, like, civilization and not quite The Sims, like, the names in it, but, like, it's like a civilization god game but there are people in it they're called nuggets and you do have to like build things so i guess it's a combination of like civ and sim city and i'm really into it so far um like there's a technology tree like all that stuff um it was very nice to play that <laughs> for a long time um i am reading the night swim by megan golden in my last bit i mentioned that i had started it but now i'm actually 10% in so I can tell you what it's about. So it is multi POV so far, uh, three. One is Hannah, who is a woman whose sister died when she was 10. And then shortly after that, her mother died. Um, the other is Rachel, who is a podcaster. She started this like really huge podcast called Guilty or Not Guilty. And it's basically your serial stand in. It's a viral podcast, crime podcast. And she's doing her new season in the small town where there's a rape trial being covered. And she gets a note on her windshield from Hannah, who wants her to investigate her sister's murder. And then the third POV is her podcast. It's transcripts from the current season that she's recording throughout the course of the book. I'm only 10%, so like it, I've literally only got set up so far. But I mean, just like the last one, I like the way that Megan Golden writes. I already feel an emotional attachment to the characters, particularly Hannah. I will say this one kind of punched me in the face a bit. I think this is the first book I've read since my mom died where there's a mom who dies of stage four cancer like it's like and it's only a little bit but I did tear up so I'm emotionally attached to Hannah already um and I and also that the trial that the podcast is covering is a rape trial and it goes into kind of not believing women, um, kind of victim blaming, all sorts of stuff. And I'm like, well, we're in for a ride. Like, it's like a little bit of me too going in there, uh, which is such a s silly buzzword when you think about it. Like, this has always been a thing. Anyway, that's kind of the flavor that the book is setting up. Um, and I'm really excited to read on because what I loved about Megan Golden's last book, The Escape Room, specificity of character, 
diving into a world and I deeply cared about several of the characters in that book. There there was one particular character in it who I'm still a little upset <laughs> about what happens to them in the book, which is a really good sign. I mean, that book in general just stuck with me. Like it's been a year and I vividly recall details and feelings from it. So I'm really, really jazzed about the night swim. Weekends are great because uh, I get to drink coffee artfully in front of the camera. It adds a little dynamic to the filming because otherwise you always get me vlogging in my office, which is the same white wall over and over again, or sometimes an Apollo 13 poster, um, which wasn't like a super conscious choice. The person who had the office before me had that poster, so it's still in my office. Anyway, it's Sunday. March 1st, and I stayed up until 1 in the morning last night reading The Night Swim. I went from 16% to 36%. I'm definitely hooked. I had to make myself stop reading because I was like, even though it's Saturday, you're an adult and you should probably go to sleep, especially because I'm also revising Link the Wind. So I finally got past page 109 of my revision which doesn't sound like much, except I was basically stuck between page like 80 and 109 for a week. So I'm now at page 127, which means I finished my problem chapter, which happened to be chapter 10. That's the one where I had to rewrite two scenes. So like the scenes existed, but the conversations had to go differently and I inserted an additional scene. And then I wrote the next chapter. Here's my cat, slightly out of frame. Let's say hi. This is Teddy. I should probably do a like meet my cats video though. I thought about it, but like how long would that really be? So this is Teddy. Anytime you see a tail, in a video, it's Teddy. Um, the the PETA cameos would normally be either knocking the tripod, so I guess technically if you see my tripod shake in videos, it's usually PETA, though sometimes Teddy. Uh, and I cut out the bits where PETA lowers himself ungracefully into a basket and creates a lot of noise on camera. That always ends up cut, so you never hear PETA. Um, hi, Teddy. And if you've ever seen one of my live streams where a cat appears, it's also Teddy because his preferred perch, because I'm sitting on the couch right now, he likes to rest on my left knee. That's his spot. Anyway, um, I got through the break into two chapter, kind of. It's it's like the, it's the scene slash chapter where the B plot kicks off. So thrillers, I mean all books, have a B plot and most typically in thrillers your B plot is going to be that sidekick character who joins in the investigation who's also very often a love interest. There's that scene where things solidify and I edited that last night. It didn't need quite as well. I rejigged the dialogue because I wanted to. My editor's gonna be like why did you rewrite so many of these scenes? I don't know. I'm in a groove after all that panic. I'm definitely in a groove where I'm all of the threads including some of the new threads are definitely crystallizing in my brain and something I'm doing that might be helpful to you. I did this while I was drafting too. I talked about this in my drafting video, uh, my new writing process video I think where I stopped right before I started act two and I stopped twice while drafting act two to kind of beat out the next like section and questions to answer. And I'm basically doing a similar thing in the revision, mostly so that I can keep track of threads. So before I sit down to write as I'm brainstorming and I brainstorm as I like walk to and from the train or I'll brainstorm in the shower just to kind of keep my mind buzzing on this book constantly, otherwise the revision wouldn't work. The thing about these revisions is they're so intense because like your brain is on the book constantly during this revision period. <laughs> what a month. Um, and I will beat out the things that I've thought of or remembered or decided to do. So it'll be like, character does this, then this, this happens, they think of this. And I have several of those kind of little lists that have helped me get through these like small chunks. It usually only helps me for a chapter or two, but I need that kind of, I have, by writing it down, it helps me go, yes, this is my plan. So I, I definitely did that to get me through chapter 12, which is actually where I am. So I'm on page 127 and I reworked two little blips that are already there and I'm writing a new little bridge within chapter 12 that I'm really excited about. It's laying track. That, that's the thing about this revision. It's track that was technically always there. 
but I'm deepening it and adding new elements to it so I think it's gonna be a lot more satisfying. So that's where I am. I'm getting my butt out of the house today. Uh, someone wanted to meet me for lunch and then a different friend wanted to see Emma and I am going to treat myself and go see Emma, the new Focus Features movie. Uh, but writing has to happen so I'm taking my laptop and I'm gonna write in between those two little social dates. Um, I should finish chapter 12 and then I would like to get chapter 13 done as well. This is all act two kind of investigation dominoes. So it's a bunch of the early steps of the investigation and I just gotta bang about just have to I'm inserting new ones and kind of reworking all the existing ones so that they flow into each other that's essentially what I've been doing for the last week so I think that would take me gosh if I can get close to like a page 140 or 150 at by the end of this weekend I'd be darn glad that would put me at about the halfway point for the book but I only have technically after this one full weekend for my revision which means I'm definitely gonna be asking my editor for an extension because writer reality I'm juggling all of this on top of my full-time job as well as I did AMM I mean that's me making choices I've had to do modding for that but also just it's a weird time I've been putting off my taxes to do this and that's not a great idea I have all this tax stuff that I have to do with especially with my mom's estate and so there's just like a lot going on and I just need to I definitely feel like I need more time to nail this revision because I don't want to rush anything. I don't want to skip over anything. I don't want to half-ass any part of this and my editor doesn't want that either. And honestly, even when she sent me her notes and said, could you get it to me by this date? She said, let me know if you need extra time. It's like she already knew that a month was tight and it's definitely tight for the amount of, I hesitate to say rewriting, it's technically rewriting. But I don't want anyone to freak out that it's like, oh my god, she had to rewrite her book. No, it's, well, I mentioned I'm combing through at this point in Act 2. I didn't have to do this as much in Act 1. I'm combing through every single interaction and dialogue scene and making sure that things are organic, that what people say, reactions to them, the investigation threads all make sense with some of the tweaks that I'm making. And it's just detail-oriented work it takes a bit longer um, and it and it is tricky because I work full-time and I'm working every single day I'm working on the weeknights but it's not as productive as a weekend when like my whole headspace can be for a book so there's a lot to juggle um, that's where I am the night swim though I stayed up till one in the morning and you're like this is the thing about a combination reading vlog and writing vlog oh the rambling so it's so good. I'm not shocked because I, I, as I already mentioned, I liked the escape room so much. So in the escape room, the kind of world that we dove into that I thought was just really beautifully drawn, that I was fascinated by, was high stakes finance in New York and corruption, all that stuff. This one, it's rape culture. <laughs> and I mean, she's doing a great job. It, I'm infuriated at turns and intrigued. She's weaving both a 30 year old small town secret murder with a current rape case, rape trial case with her podcast. And I'm starting to see the threads of how things are connected in this town. And I'm really, really excited about kind of what's happening and how people are related. I'm trying to piece things together. So like in a flashback to 30 years ago, it's mentioning a nice boy with gray eyes and I'm like, which adult is it? And I love that kind of thing with a reading experience. This is for me part of the fun of a small town secrets book. And I love it when they do the deep dive of like the deeper past. Though man, it is so strange to think of 1992 as the deeper past. <sighs> strange. <laughs> which actually makes me the same age as one of the characters uh, is she's a few years older than I am I'm like that is <sighs> you're you're getting old Karen but yeah I'm really loving it I mean this is on track to be a five-star read as as with every thriller though as long as it doesn't blow it in the third act and her last book didn't blow it so it's on track to be a five-star read which would be two five-star thrillers in a row which would be a pretty good reading month and as the only thing I would say for those of you who are going ooh and I'll say it in my review um, because it revolves around rape culture and rape and a lot of the high octane feelings and emotions of that including people being pretty vile um, it just might not be the right book for all readers if that's a trigger point for you 
but it's one of the better quote unquote me too books I've read in a while. I really like how it's weaving a thread of kind of rape culture across, you know, generations. And yeah, I'm along for the ride, 36%. Uh, I'll probably finish it tomorrow. Um, I don't see myself, well, I don't know. We'll see if I stay up like super late tonight, but I should be an adult and not do that. So that's where I am. Hey, I'm on to a new book, The Guest List by Lucy Foley. So I finished The Night Swim. It was amazing. I'll talk more about it in my wrap up. Definitely a five star read. I mean, Megan Golden is a new gold standard for me, honestly, in adult thrillers. Like, she's basically up there with Ruth Ware and Riley Sager, where she is an auto buy. And I'm so sorry you have to wait for The Night Swim to come out in August. Long, torturous wait. So now I'm on the guest list. So this one's British, and it is about a wedding. I'm only at 10%, so just far enough to know premise, but nothing too crazy. It's multi POV so far. Um, so far, I've got a wedding planner, the bride, and now I'm on the best man's chapter. And the prologue was your typical something bad happened at the wedding, and then it goes back 24 hours. And revision wise, it's it's been a time. I'll do a full update tomorrow when I have my face on and I'm not reading and trying to go to bed. I mean, look, it's 1244 in the morning. I'm a terrible adult. We're a good reader. Um, I'm back on track as of tonight, but this has been probably one of the roughest revisions I've ever done, which I don't mean to scare anyone. Um, but it's just been intense, I think, because I'm, I have such high expectations for myself. Like, it's self-imposed pressure to nail it. And it's been real interesting. Um, and I'll, I'll talk more about it in a little bit. Tiny update. The fourth POV is the bride's sister, half sister. So it's four POV, wedding planner, bride, best man, bride, sister, because then it comes back to the bride. So I'm just going to assume that those are the four POVs. I'm an idiot. It's five POVs. I forgot this one. <laughs> this is the wife of the bride's best friend. Happy Friday. It is March 6th. I finished the guest list last night. Stayed up far too late again. Uh, it ended up being really, really good. Like I got kind of to like 30% and I was kind of all in and I breezed through the rest. Had a bit of a, I wouldn't even say a slow start, but like the first few POVs, I wasn't entirely sure I was going to settle into things. But then I did. It was really... It has an emotional tug, meaning all of the kind of threads, the way that they interweave, it's all complex. There's lots of drama. You have to suspend disbelief a little bit in terms of how things come together, because there are some wild coincidences that, of course, add to drama. Um, ultimately, I'm going to technically give it five stars on Goodreads, but it's really a 4.5 because I, I had to knock a bit off because it has abrupt ending syndrome. It just ends and I flicked to the next page and it was over and I was like, how, why? I'd say it needed a good 10 more pages at the end of the book as like a deep breath to release and resolve some threads, but otherwise, I mean, honestly, if the concept sounds up your alley and you like multi-POV and kind of like personal drama, not personal drama, but I mean, it's isolated wedding island with conflicts and murder. It's good. Uh, I do recommend it. I really, really liked it. In my wrap up, I'll go over when it's coming out and everything, but I really liked it. And then this morning on the train, I started something called The Last Flight. Uh, so far, all I know there's an ominous prologue. Someone wants to switch places with a woman who's coming to the airport. You don't know why, except the character whose head you're in, you don't know who, knows that she wants to disappear, and so does the narrator in that section. So, And you also know there's going to be a plane crash, because all of the chapters say one day before the crash. So you're like, ooh, what's going to happen? And you're plunged then into the primary POV. I think there's two in the book, uh, but I've only been in the first one so far. A woman named Claire, she's married to a senator who is basically abusing her. She's in an abusive marriage, but he's incredibly rich and famous and controlling, and she is planning to leave. That's as far as I've gotten so far, but I'm already really sucked into kind of the POV, and, and I'm a sucker for uh, plane crashes and political intrigue, so I'm excited about this one. Hello, welcome to a Sunday face. I'm doing a face mask, cleaning my apartment. It's the 8th of March. 
I'm in a good place. Cleaning my apartment is good. It's not just a procrastination tool. I know that when my apartment is clean, I do better, like my head is clear, and it's gonna help me <laughs> revise. And I'm kinda sorta almost in the home stretch. I'm at a page 180. I made a ton of progress yesterday. I went to a coffee shop, and you're like, you never vlog this stuff. And I'm like, yeah, hi, Teddy here. I'm, I'm terrible at it, and I'm very sorry. Got an extension from my editor. Uh, I'm basically more than halfway done, feeling feeling pretty good. Uh, the feedback from CPs has been good. I finally feel like I'm gelling with this revision, and I have read some good ass books. I started The Last Flight by Julie Clark on Friday, and I finished it last night. Really fast, good read about a woman who's married to kind of like a golden boy, like a JFK Jr. type. Does that date me? It's the reference used in the book too, but like, so the the son of a very famous old American family who's going to run for Senate and she's his wife and he is abusive and terrible and she wants to run from him. And she runs into another woman who is also fleeing from something and they switch tickets to better help themselves go their separate ways. And the flight that the wife was supposed to be on crashes. She ends up in Oakland living this other woman's life and starts realizing, oh, she was fleeing for very different reasons than what she told me. I could be in danger here, but also if my husband realizes I didn't die on that flight, he's going to murder me. So it's kind of like that kind of suspense and it goes back and forth between Claire, the wife, her perspective in the present after the crash living in Oakland and Ava, the woman she switched with in the six months leading up to the crash. So you understand kind of what her life was like and how that's complicating Claire's. There's also the niggling question of whether Ava got on the flight. I really liked it. I cared about both women deeply. It was a suspense book. It was definitely a thriller, but it had almost an upmarket women's fiction feel. Uh, again, I'll go into more detail in my wrap up, but I really, really liked it. I gave it unequivocal five stars. It had the perfect wind down at the end. Like, you can really impress me if you just have the right wind down at the end, she says, knowing that she has to rewrite the ending to her own book, hoping she can nail it. Ugh, you can know what you like in books and still fail to do it yourself as a writer, which is the ultimate cruelty. Uh, but that's where I am. I think my next read is going to be His and Hers by Alice Feeney. I was so jazzed to get a physical arc of this one. I, as you know, had very mixed to positive feelings about Sometimes I Lie. I mean, it's been months now. I liked it. I mean, at this point, I liked it. So I'm excited to jump into this one. I expect it to be just as twisty, and we'll see if it is as polarizing as well. Uh, Pete is with us now. That's his lounging spot. I got Rebel Rose by Emma Tarot. Emma is a friend of mine. I'm so excited for this. This is her debut. We have been friends for years, and it is a Beauty and the Beast book, so it's Disney, and it's basically like post the movie, and regardless of how you felt about the Emma Watson movie, I'm honestly not the biggest fan. I was a huge fan of Dan Stevens in like David Bowie makeup and kind of the historical era. I love the historical era. So this is a basically historical fiction, like historical fantasy YA. Emma is the real deal, like she knows shit about France, guys, <laughs> and I cannot wait to read this. I have CP'd one of Emma's other books. She is one of my favorite writers who isn't published, so I'm so, so excited to read this one and for the world to see her work. And really, I'm closing out on a pretty good reading month and tumultuous writing month. I think I'll end up closing out this reading vlog on his and hers, so you still have a little bit more to go. Um, but January was rough, which is why I trashed my footage, and I'll talk about the, the book that I read that really threw me off in January in my reading wrap-up. But February into March has been amazing. I've had a ton of five-star reads. A ton of these are anticipated thrillers by big authors coming out in 2020 this year, and so far thumbs up from me. I think it's gonna be a really, really strong year in adult thrillers. It already feels stronger than last year, so I think there's gonna be a lot of good new books for people to kind of latch on to, and I'm really excited. Hello, it is Wednesday night. Yes, I'm covering half my face. I'm reading His and Hers by Alice Feeney. It's really cool having a physical arc 
Um, why am I hiding my face? Yeah, because blemishes. Anyway, I'm on page 119. I'm about a third of the way through, and I'm getting the lay of the land. We've got a third person POV throughout who is very cryptic and has killed someone, and then we go between his and hers in the chapters. His and hers, Anna and Jack, are exes. Anna is a BBC reporter, Jack is a cop. Uh, they are divorced, and Jack has moved back to their small town, and Anna still lives in London, and there's a murder, and Anna goes there to cover it for the BBC, and Jack is suspicious, but also Jack is entangled. Uh, they both knew the woman who was murdered. Uh, that's all I got so far. I'm really hesitant to kind of say too much about it, because the way that Alice Feeney books go is... Even, like, talking about what they're about could potentially spoil something for someone. I went in completely cold, and I'm not unhappy about it. Uh, except to say, so far, this has hints of having one of my favorite tropes in it. And I'm real curious to see if she nails it. So, yeah, I'm hoping to finish this one. I mean, it's Wednesday. If I could finish it by tomorrow, this vlog could go up on Friday, and that would be very, very cool. So we're going to see what happens. Torrential rain, and we just got the official notice to go home because of coronavirus. So now I get to work from home, and I'm almost done with the book. So, yay! My feet are going to be so wet. I've got a cat in my lap and a book. I'm not normally a evening reader, but I really, really want to finish. I'm on page 244 which is really, really close to the end. I finished His and Hers last night. It was really, really good. Way less divisive than Sometimes I Lie. Uh, I gave it five stars. I loved it. I guessed some things and felt very clever and didn't guess other things, just basically perfect. Um, really, really good. I'm sorry it doesn't come out till July, and I'll go into more details as always in my wrap-up. And speaking of wrapping up, I'm going to wrap up this reading vlog so I can post it today, which I can do because I'm working from home officially now, thanks coronavirus, and I immediately did jump into another book last night because I'm trying to keep my brain clear, which is my recommendation to all of you who are feeling anxious. Read marathon things, like whatever it takes to keep your anxiety brain clear because this is bonkers. Um, but I'm sure the next reading vlog is going to be real interesting because it's going to be during a very weird time. Great time to stop. So I'm going to leave you here. Thank you as always for watching. Give this a thumbs up. I'm going to keep on keeping on with the reading vlogs. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. A lot of you aren't subscribed. Like I can see who watches my videos and who's subscribed. Like if you've been waiting, do it. Sure, why not? You have to stay home now, right? Is that too dark? <sighs> and as always, thank you so much for watching. Look for that reading wrap up where I'll go into detail about all of these books very, very soon. And as always, guys, happy reading.